Michelle Carter was sentenced to 15 months in a Massachusetts jail for involuntary manslaughter. Carter had sent Conrad Roy dozens of text messages encouraging him to take his own life. Go ahead and do it. Why haven't you done it yet? You haven't done it? Well, get back in your truck and try again to kill yourself. This is a groundbreaking case because we don't see levels of evil like this in the world. Like, it doesn't happen. He killed himself by carbon monoxide inhalation after Carter sent him numerous text messages urging him to commit suicide. She sat on the phone with him mm -hmm. as he died. She heard his last breath, apparently. You're just making it harder on yourself and pushing it off. You have to do it. Do you want to do it now? Like, I'm reading these things, and I'm like, you think she was talking about brushing his teeth? The term wolf in sheep's clothing is thrown around. This is a wolf in sheep's clothing. This girl might look innocent, might look pretty. Like, you talk about the devil, she is the fucking devil. Is she then responsible for that at such a young age, for being a young woman who's clearly going through difficult things herself? We're not dealing with a nutter here. A nutter and a sick evil cunt are not the same thing. The reason that they had to work out whether or not this was a crime is because people aren't this fucking evil. And in that courtroom, the only time she cried was when they were sentencing her. All of the pain, all of the messages, all of the agony that she'd caused, no flicker of emotion, just deadpan. Cold bitch. bitch. This week on the True Jordy podcast, podcast. Uh, we've been watching a program on Sky Crime new yeah. channel. We really should be getting a fucking uh, fee for Cut this. Cut of this, yeah. Um, Sky, you know, at some point we got a. Um, it's it's a it's a program called "I Love You Now Die," and it's the story of a girlfriend who, depending on which side of the fence you sit on instructed her boyfriend to commit suicide yeah. and he did so and then there was this massive court case where basically it's like is she to blame because he was clearly suicidal mm -hmm. but mentally Ill. but by the letter of the law is telling someone to commit suicide and then them doing it does that make you uh, guilty of manslaughter or not and that's what this whole thing is about because part of it is like if you tell someone to jump off a bridge and they do it is that your fault how you know? responsible are you for someone else's exactly. actions in exactly. life yeah and how influential are you on someone else's mind body and soul well yeah and i mean i'm, I'm very influential and i for one want you, want you all to live yeah uh, for the record although you know if you do die your youtube account still subscribed so uh we haven't lost nothing then fantastic yeah, yeah not financially um, anyway yeah fuck me, we are so uh, horrible what i would say is i don't um i've got some i made a little note before we start this since Brian released the mental health video, All right, yeah. Brian and I have both received a lot of messages from people who have said thank you, or um, I don't want to make it sound like we're bigging ourselves up. What I mean is like people- Did you get messages? That's loads annoying. Loads of messages. Was my video. Yeah, uh, I reviewed it. No, um, I did send it to you and I was like, what do you think? And you were like, because when you speak about mental health, it is such a sensitive topic. You want your mate to tell you, Absolutely. is this good enough? Yeah. And you actually said, put it on the main channel. It's important people say this. So I was like, all right. Yeah, exactly. Because I'd already uploaded a TG2 then. Yeah. Because the, the video quality was shit. And I was like, people won't. Uh, well, when you used to such high quality, most other YouTubers looked at that and went, fucking hell, did he film this on a red? <laughs> yeah. Um, so... A lot of people messaged and said, there have been times where I've been feeling really low, mm -hmm. and I'm not saying that we stopped people from uh, you know, doing something awful, but what we did maybe do is give someone some company when they needed it, and we've kind of just put the podcast out there and put everything we've done out there. Maybe if, it makes, if it brings laughter into people's lives, so be it. That's what we want to do. But what I what don't want to do is um, cause this to be then something that triggers someone or makes someone feel bad in a way. So just know we are going to be discussing suicide during this, and a lot of quite dark things. So... Uh, we're not going to be insensitive, I'll put it that way. No, but you know, people know our sense of humour at this point, and jokes will be made. He has a caveat. Yeah. However, I, I mean, out of all the big UK YouTubers, I think I'm the one who's discussed suicide in in a passionate way the most, I would say. So, you know so it's clearly, yeah. this is a, a, a topic close to home. It's something mm -hmm. I care about. Mm -hmm. I don't want anyone to ever take their own life My, that's the message behind that video that i made is keep going happiness will come and that is the message that this girl should have been telling her boyfriend now that is then th this is the crux of the whole situation if we timeline it just a little bit these two met 
very briefly when introduced by parents. Or can we can we give a bit of a description of these two? Yeah. Okay. Because if you haven't seen it yet, it is a little bit. Um, quite an innocent little relationship that is all too common in today's society where people, they spend most of their time texting rather than actually seeing each other. Thousands upon thousands of text messages. How many, did you ever have a relationship like that when you were in your teens? Yeah, it was a bit like that. Yeah, because uh, when you're living with your parents, sometimes, you know, you can't, you get can't away. go out, yeah. you can't, and so, especially if you don't have a car yeah. or, you know, you live in a small town, yeah. there's not necessarily a way to get to someone who's five miles away. And also, whatever. like, the thing that keeps being repeated is these are two very lonely kids. But, like, yeah. also, when you're in your teens, 17, 18, 19, who isn't lonely at that age? Like, you do, well, you feel like a lost spirit who doesn't know who they are yet. Because you are. Like, most right. people don't know who they are yet by that age. But what they don't, I, and I think the thing that makes people feel extremely lost is they don't know that that period of their life will then change into a period where you've gone through the self-reflection in your teens and then you begin to become an adult. Like it's, people it's, think that will last forever. Do you know yeah, what I mean? and also, you know, you're listening to certain kinds of music, you're feeling lonely, you're feeling yeah. like... Oh, no one knows, understands me mm. and all those feelings f- seem very original and very unique to you because they're and, the first time you've ever thought it and they're actually classic and we all feel them when we're getting to that age yeah. and you've got this girl who's um, quite a pretty girl but in a mm, uh, what did you describe her as? like ghetto pretty sort of thing that wasn't my exact wording, but I said she definitely looked less well off. Yeah, uh, she, than, yeah than, to, I called the girl next door. Yeah, um, that was a funny thing was I said she looks like the girl who comes from a, a quite, I don't mean this in a disparaging way, like a quite a poor part of town. Yeah. And Brian was like, yeah, the girl next door. <laughs> to me, yeah. And he is kind of like a little bit nerdy. On some pictures, he looks very skinny. Yeah, um, he's and, got like sort of very teenage skin, whereas sometimes you watch footage or see photos, and he's yeah. got a lot of spots. And sometimes quite, quite you a see, handsome lad. Yeah, but um, I, I looked at him and I thought, you look like you need a good meal in you and a few gym sessions, like quite right. a sort of uh, scrawny kid. But yeah, and that happens to some teens, yeah. uh, especially as when you look at his parents. His dad's not particularly well built. Yeah, his granddad was a very big guy. But yeah. I wonder if that was something else that would happen there. Yeah, and none of the family are particularly athletic. Athletic, mm. yeah. So he clearly came from a background where he wasn't that athletic but guy. You don't see her speak much, but it, it, at one point you do see him talking to like a YouTube video, uh-huh. and you think, oh, this is a very articulate, quite a smart individual. Yeah, and unfortunately, like. People who are contemplating their existence and who suffer from depression, they're usually the smart people who are right. like wondering, why am I here? What is my purpose? Am I doing this enough? Am I good? At-? People who spend that much time thinking, they're usually the smart ones. And it's almost a torturous quality to have. Yeah, which is difficult because especially when you're a teen and if you don't... If you don't have adults around you who are willing to engage in that kind of conversation, people can be quite dismissive of that. Because when you get to the stage where we are in our lives, where we've, we're not, by any means, we've found an answer, but people can be quite dismissive and go, God, you're overthinking it, or blah, blah, blah. Especially yeah. if our parents who are quite normal people going through their own divorce, mm-hmm. having their own as emotional they, problems. Were, yeah. Maybe, not abusive, but definitely there was violence in that household. Yeah, he, he got beaten up by his dad, it seemed. Now, I, Although I don't the know dad how, claimed they had a fight. I don't know how bad it was or how regular it was. I, his dad clearly loved his son, I th- uh, but they, yeah, they had the kind of relationship where that would happen occasionally. You do get the feeling that there was confrontation a lot and that this guy was He wasn't being struggling. listened to. Yeah. As a son, he, his parents, when you see them reflecting on their relationship with their son, they were not aware fully of just how dark it was in his mind. And so these two were very much in a relationship where where it felt like them against the world. They were framing things in a very, not to be uh, disrespectful, but uh, a classic teenage way. We're Romeo and Juliet. We're this, we're that. The devil is our leader. Those kind of things. They, they, They were coming out with some dark shit, but I think, I don't know if both sides of it were that way. I feel, after right. reading the text messages, like he fully was invested in this as, as, a, as a pain relationship where they're both suffering together in yeah. Romeo and Juliet. Whereas for her, she was writing her own movie that wasn't Romeo and Juliet. She was writing a movie where she survives him and goes on and 
it's almost like Kate Winslet in Titanic and lives the rest of her life out with she's everyone. She's the martyr, Fe- yeah. She's the one who carries... But for him, it was very much almost like, we're both going to end this we're gonna, Well, in Romeo and Juliet, he texts her and he literally goes, you know how that ends? And she's like, oh no, I wouldn't want that. Mm. And you're like, oh right, okay. We well, just want him to die then. We're racing ahead a little, but yeah. I think... so. Um, some of the some of the notes I've made here, basically, um, I think when she realised he was ill, mm-hmm. it felt like through the text messages she sort of seen an opportunity there to wow. create her own reality, that using him as a as a. I find that when you deal with nutters, and I don't mean people who don't understand right from wrong nutters like people who run out in front of cars and things like that i think when you deal with you know how women get this sort of bunny boiler label i think not just women but men as well you you get self-obsessed people who feel like they're living a movie and they are the star of the show and i feel like when i read her messages i thought i can see what you're doing here you're you feel like he's an extra in the life story that is your movie whereas he thinks that you and him are together bonnie and clyde yeah yeah actor and actress the leading roles whereas he is just an accessory in your life how and that's what I wonder is mm. how conscious of that construction she was or whether because she was just looking and reaching out for whatever she could to make some meaning in her life that this was the first thing that she found. She watched Glee. That the, There was the whole story around the actress in Glee who had the boyfriend who overdosed. So this was, in, in for those who don't know, the, Glee was a, a teen show where they used to sing and all of that shit. And, Very, um, so popular. It was it was huge. And basically, the, the two leading characters, once again, um, were in a relationship on the show, but also in real life. Genius. He died in real life. They had to write him out of the show. Mm -hmm. And everyone felt very sorry and crowded around Leah Michelle, I think her name was. She became almost the hero of it because she was given a lot of airtime. She was on Ellen. She was on all these. She was everywhere. Where it was like, he was the best man and you know he was amazing. Oh. He made me feel incredible. Oh, I don't know if I'll ever find this again. And what, all the cliches. And what you realise, I even wrote down one of the quotes myself, um, where um, Leah Michelle in, in Glee says, you are my first and I want you to be, be my, my last. last. Yeah. What you find is she is using exact quotes from Leah Michelle, the character she plays and the real person in interviews towards him and then after his death as well. So you can see just how much of a movie she feels like this all is. I'll also say this. He clearly didn't watch Glee, right? <laughs> so when he receives that text message he, or he anything takes like that, as, he'll take that as, my God, this girl is a fucking yeah. poet. Like this woman is coming yeah. up with stuff that really makes her think she loves yeah, me. It, it touches him deep in his heart. I'd imagine so. And I, I'd imagine even if you got that as another teenage girl, you might not draw the line between it being in Glee or you'll have watched Glee and gone, God, she feels the same. That's so lovely. He it, seemed a bit of a, a, I would say a lad's lad, like quite a... He was definitely a man's man. So there's one story that definitely made me feel like he was part of that, which was when he got his captain's license for mm-hmm. the boat. And it was a really proud moment for his grandfather and obviously for the family mm. that he'd gone out there and done this mm. and that he was doing something with his life and mm. that he was achieving things. He was clearly very intelligent because he got a captain's license yeah. for a boat. And that was weeks before he died. Yeah, which I find was one of the things made me really question the whole thing. Because I thought, if you're so depressed that you want to r- realistically want to kill yourself... In a way where your life is so awful. Do you get the motivation to get up out of bed and get your captain's license? On a boat. Do you really have that that level of motivation? Or do you not understanding? Well, as someone who's known people who, uh, you know, have committed suicide, there's there's obviously high-functioning people Mm -hmm. who can get on with things for the sake of loved ones. But to do that is very strange because it is a self-motivated, self-beneficial act it's not you're not doing it as you, you know i've got like people to look after and stuff like that exactly. it's strange mm-hmm. so to me while this was clearly a troubled young man who was on prozac had uh, tried to overdose before but i don't there's people who take tablets that i think is a cry for help sometimes rather than a, a serious attempt the, the severity of it i'm not trying to say i don't take it seriously or oh, I don't think it's a serious time but 
there is clearly levels in attempting suicide where you think if someone t pulls a shotgun on themselves, it's different than when you take an overdose of pain pills. And the fact that he did that, it, it showed that there was issues, mm -hmm. but I don't know, and the real question of this is, would he have done it without the influence of her? And that's the that, real key. That's what, what it, where it heads to. And um, It's very much like a catfish almost scenario. These two people meet a maximum of like five times, I think, in the whole relationship. Yeah, yeah. And what that allows you to do is construct an identity which isn't really true to life. Mm. So she's saying, I love you. It's very easy to say I love you to someone that you barely ever see, that you can control what they see of you. Mm. You can give this... Uh, image of you off as to whatever you want it's and bullshit. of course you're going to like that it's bullshit yeah it, but as a teenager it, it, that it I feels imagine very can real. feel very real not to patronise teenagers no but, but when you've got I no, remember that feeling when you haven't got anyone else who's giving you that attention seeing those words appear on the screen and the the, the is it the, the emotions that are going off in your brain yeah. you're, you're obviously getting a chemical reaction there that probably gives him a man suffering from depression a young young man a little bit of a boost, a little a respite. bit, of, yeah, and, yeah. And but but then when she uses that to take him further down the dark road, he says he's hearing voices in his head saying to kill himself. But I don't know. Sometimes it's the devil, by the way. Yeah, th there's things he says where I think I wonder how real he is being. That's there. exactly what I thought when yeah. I read it. I thought, wow, I remember because I remember there were people like Slipknot in my school mm. and like all those kind of things. They would say dark shit all the time, mm. and I'd be like, yeah, yeah. For effect. For effect. Mm. Because it was like, that's a cool thing to say. Mm. It's cool that the devil is like speaking to me or whatever. And you're like, yeah, yeah, good There's one. people who I remember in my high school were the most, you know, middle class, mm -hmm. wholesome family. Untroubled. Yeah. Like never had a problem in their life type people. Not, not, a, not a deep, not a problem of the level that what other people he, Here's have. what I'm saying people want to seek meaning from life sometimes and they and they look in places like I'll become a, a goth for example where they want to stand out they want to look like a troubled soul they want to mm -hmm. they want to be in pain for the sake of it and I'm not saying that that's what happened with this kid by any means but sometimes you just see people saying things and doing things just for how it sounds or how it looks how unhealthy do you think it is uh, in society in general that when we talk about suicide we can't really have an honest evaluation of why and how that person died because we don't want to upset a family or we don't want to upset the people around them and if we're being honest and we're really trying to get to the bottom of a scenario sometimes you have to say something that could sound cruel in order to really be kind to those people and let them actually process well, well, the feelings. Well, what we're dealing with here, it's kind of like a murder because someone's murdered themselves, essentially. Like yeah. it, and when you're doing an examination of what went wrong, you know, um, say, for example, you're judging a murder and you're a detective, you, you can't be worrying about people's feelings. You yeah. need to get to the root of what went wrong here. Mm -hmm. And I think all too often with suicide, people go, ah, oh, well, he was just depressed. Like, and they don't look into it enough. And there isn't, because ultimately, often with suicide, the people who die are the, are, were failed by those around them. And, that's and what, that is the sad truth that exactly. we don't want to say because it is going to be upsetting to some people. And I'm not saying yeah. all the time, because sometimes there are some people who are so gone and so troubled that it is almost beyond help. But that's much rarer than I think we we make out. We all think, God, if we could have just had a conversation with this person, I could have done. And that's true. Mm -hmm. Like there, there is help. There is, there is, there is things that you can do to help people. That's why we're always encouraging people to talk. And like I said in my video, it's not just on them though. Mm -hmm. It's on the people around them that when you spot that. You gotta, you gotta reach out and grab them, mm -hmm. literally, and say no. You know what I mean? And sometimes that doesn't happen. And do you know what it is? If you, if there is someone who commits suicide and you didn't reach out and grab them before it happened, I'm not saying beat yourself up and feel bad, but, but there's a difference between that and then being very, very nasty to someone before that happens. So do and you that's what that? we're looking at here. So do and you think? And I guess that's. I the bet right you question. that happens more. I was just saying this. 
than what people would like to admit. So, what, what so I bet you there's final conversations that have happened that no one's ever admitted to many times oh, yeah. in circumstances of suicide. Uh, this is one thing I've, I also thought was, in many ways, she was the one who was left behind to clean up the mess that they both made between them in a way. And that's what I found very almost unfair on her was that whilst he was the one who had killed himself, mm. she was left behind to answer for everyone else's think, mess in that I think courtroom. that's what she wanted. Partly, yeah. And I think she, in her mind, she... Uh, it's she almost, she'd planned it like that, actually. There was, right, there yeah. Was, yeah. Because she did the charity event afterwards. Yeah, well, we're, and, we're racing yeah. ahead a bit, but, like, there was... Um, so we haven't gone into the messages yet, and we will get to the specifics of how bad it was, the things that she said to him. But you talk... One thing she did... So I think it was me a few days before he actually finally went through with it. Mm. He wasn't missing at all. Uh, she's texting him. But you, we've got the records. You can, you can see them for yourself in the, in the actual documentary. But she starts telling her, her friends, her f- friend, people who she knows, they're not really her friends. They often don't give a fuck about by the looks of it. But he's missing. Oh, my God. Where is he? What's going to happen? He said this. He said, and what she's trying to do is gauge what it's going to be like when he finally goes through with it. And she's planning. And she's also wanting to, to feel... Is it going to be worth it? I think it feels that way. She's at, because she is wondering what level of attention am I going to get if this actually all comes off. So and I she wondered, wants a taste of that. So I did wonder. Obviously, we don't. If he'd have attempted and then he hadn't have died, maybe we'd just have been going. Okay, these were two people who were sort of playing chicken with each other in a way, or kind of. I just wonder whether she just wanted the attention of saying anything like that. So a lot of people have treated that bit as a trial run. I think she just wanted the attention. Anyway, I think that that's. Time. The, I think it's both. I think right. it is both. Yeah. Okay. I think for her, this kid meant nothing to her. Do after, you really? After after reading the messages, I think she seen him coming a mile off and thought, "You, I can work with this." Like, right. she, she, so she's very lonely herself. She's got an eating disorder. She's had some mental health issues, but she's certainly not a psycho who doesn't know right from wrong. Mm-hmm. She is a smart girl, clearly intelligent. And she, I think when he walked into her life, she thought, he has someone who's desperate, mm-hmm. like I'm desperate. The difference is he was desperate for something different. Okay. She was desperate for attention. He was desperate for someone to help him. To give meaning. And yeah. I, I think w- where he was coming to reach out for that, she was like, oh no, like I can use this to my advantage to make more people care about me. The no- I want to build my numbers up so almost. Do you the, know what I mean? The only way that I disagree or uh, would question what you said there is and I was sort of interested in the psychologist in the show where he was going through and basically trying to insinuate that it wasn't a nasty or malicious area that she came from but it was that this was someone who was so desperate and so troubled that they didn't know she didn't know and it almost flipped through the conversation that we we're having well, yeah. where she thought in the end that she was she thought she was helping him so i would i would take them up on that and i would say that's absolute bollocks um what, but because what do she, you have to say how can you prove the other way would right. be my so, question so here's yeah. the thing is right from wrong mm-hmm. at its most basic level when a human being is threatening to commit suicide you reach out and you stop them Mm-hmm. And the fact that she did the opposite and encouraged it, there's no what what he is doing is creating a false reality where she's helping him. Like the times where he thought about not committing suicide, she actually said, "No, no, you've got to do this." Mm-hmm. Like she, in, she insisted he do that. So that psychologist breakdown, it was clear he was on the payroll from the defence, and it, it was just like, "God, you will say anything, won't you?" Because. Anyone, and this isn't, you don't have to have a psychology degree to know common sense tells you if you encourage someone to commit suicide, then they will. You are, a, you are an absolute piece of shit. But if you're, so I'm, I'm not necessarily, I don't What, what he's insinuating her. is, what he's insinuating is, what it became about for her is getting attention, and it wasn't about being evil. Well, I'm sorry, the facts are that when you care about a bit of attention mm. over the life of another human being, mm. you are evil. You are pure evil what about when you're then having conversations in uh text messages where you're talking about the devil and the devil and if the devil becomes 
like the framing of the whole thing where the devil encourages people to do wrong. He encourages people to um, maybe to commit suicide, maybe to do awful things in their life. What if that flips it completely okay, for so that person? You remember my messages, right? Right. Not everything you message, you're actually going to do. You're actually really mean. Yeah, absolutely. It's fantasy talk. And I think with this, for them, it was almost like, Fun, it was fantasy. There was, it was a level like, of sexual ro- it tension. Was, it was romanticizing mm-hmm. this thing that they were doing and making it feel all fucking. So then, what about the less romantic side where he says, "If you dare tell anyone, uh, I don't know, there'll be repercussions." Because there were. He says, "I would only hate you if I would, you told yeah, anyone." I, I would only hate you because that is a very manipulative thing, and I'm, I'm not saying therefore uh he bears all the responsibility because, but it is a very manipulative thing to because, say because why would you care about that if you if you actually wanted to die what if you really wanted to die why would you care about people finding out the things that you were saying in my opinion he never really fully planned on going through with this so you're and saying that's why yeah. you care about it right because but, his mom didn't know and he would lie to her and say oh my mom's seen the computer and she didn't bat an eyelid mm-hmm. because he had the su- how to commit suicide on the computer yeah. and she didn't care what he wanted to to portray to the girl uh, Michelle um, was that his mother didn't care about him or and his mother had no idea it was this bad so he was that sh- that proves this was fantasy so then Partly. And how much of this then is teenagers constructing their own reality between them, where the mum, for instance, is clearly uh, having a hard time herself. She's going through a divorce. I think she was on antidepressants. Mm. Some antidepressants are very strong to the point where people can take information and not react to it. And I do wonder how much of this is a mother who isn't necessarily not caring for her son, Mm. but a mother who doesn't, can't care for her son because... She's in her own world of pain. Are you she, saying that the mother seeing the? Uh, what I'm saying is because the uh, mother denies, like the mother, the I mother no, denies it. Yeah. But then, you know, how do we know the mother doesn't have her own issues? Apart, of, she did strike me as, uh, and I know this is very judgmental. She struck me as someone with her own problems. I agree, problems. But the one thing that convinced me that the mother was a decent human being was after everything that little girl did to her son. The mother said, I almost can't even hate her because she's clearly so sick in the head. That's interesting. Like, and, and I thought, for you to speak like that, to almost forgive, I'm not saying she forgave her, yeah. but to, to come to terms with what has happened, the level of pain, you, you can only do that if you've got love inside of you and you've got care and you've got compassion and that kind of compassion that you can show for this girl who's destroyed your son mm-hmm. and you can look at that girl and go... I can't even, I can't even demonise you because you're clearly so ill that you would do that to my boy. Mm-hmm. Like that is a that is realistic. Fair play though to fair. the mother for saying that. Can I play devil's advocate? On sure. That? Because I don't mean this in a mean way. It's much easier to forgive someone if, in court, you have almost been vindicated by that woman, by the door, by the um, by Michelle, because she's almost taken the fall. And I, I don't mean, and I say that not meaning to blame the mother. Not at all. But, but you get what I'm saying no, no, when but, I say that. But this is the thing is, the pain that that mother will live with for the rest of her life and the, and the father means she hasn't taken the fall. The mother and father have taken the fall. Because that little bitch is going to get out of court, get out of a jail and go on with the rest of her life and, and meet someone and maybe have a happy ending. There's no happy ending for that mother and father. No, absolutely. So the truth is, they have taken the fall. And the fact I that think. she's able to still show compassion towards that girl and say, and almost pity her for the, for the, for the sickness that she's actually showed. I don't know, that convinced me. I thought, because we've, we've seen... We've seen other famous parents on TV not show that level of compassion, and, and I don't blame them when yeah. someone's done something to your kid. I just, I don't know. It convinced me that this was someone who was telling the truth. That was, that's really interesting, because I'm not sure I read it exactly mm. that way. But maybe that's inconsequential anyway. There was a point in the documentary where they do talk about there are two families here who are banking on it, this court case almost vindicating them of responsibility. Mm. I did think that was a very good point, because as parents, imagine going through that where it's like, your child has either helped in the suicide or your child is a manipulative young man who has committed suicide and taken this girl along for a ride with him. 
and, and neither are true. Exactly. In, in, in reality. But, but, but they're like, banking on, do you know what I mean? When both families walk away, I feel like the mother and father of the boy have to sit there and go, we should have seen this. Yeah. And the mother and father of the girl also have to say, we, we should, should have, have seen, seen this, this. In, from her. Because of the messages that the girl sent, God, imagine knowing you raised a, a, a fucking monster like that. Someone who would, does that, yeah. Because this is the thing is, what what is suicidal thought? It, it is literally your brain telling itself, we, this, I need to end my life. And what you need, and many people have them, but what gets them through it is the hard times passing, the good times coming, support mm. from the family, support from the friends. Even I've had suicidal thoughts, and mm. it did make me think, like, I wonder if someone I loved or really thought was great was telling me every fucking day, nah, nah, you're better off killing yourself. Mm. Like, fucking hell. It's bad enough when the brain's telling itself that, let alone outside influence saying that as well. I mean, it's going to be the worst possible thing. It just affirms what you're thinking, really, because Ten very often over. what you do is you vocalise something to work out if you're right or wrong, but, and the other person goes, no, yes, and then you go, oh, I'm right, or oh, I'm wrong. But just to put it into perspective, and we'll read some of the messages out, it wasn't even like she was going, I think you should commit suicide, you know. It was It was a lot more like, are you aggressive. done it? Are you doing it? Like yeah. ev- it seemed like on the hour, every hour towards the end, like, when are you going to do it? Are you doing it tonight? Are you going to do it tomorrow? What time? We need, all right, make sure you do it though. Why haven't you done it yet? You know you'll not do it if you don't wait until, you know, like she was like, you could see her all excitement that this was about to happen. How much do you think that she didn't think he'd go through with it? The, the, only, the only weird thing that I think is, so every night he would go to bed. There were some nights we'd go to bed and he'd go, I will kill myself tonight. Mm. And then she'd be messaging, wake up the next day mm-hmm. and he'd still be there. Mm. And to some extent, there's a bit of a thrill that she feels like she's the girl who loves a guy who's so... There is that every girl, not every girl, a lot of women or a lot of people in relationships want someone they can save. Someone who is a tortured soul, a wild person, mm-hmm. someone who's tortured by the devil or something that they don't, an energy they don't know. And this person can help save that person. I think, and some I people think love that. The, the knight in shining armor thing is something that gets put on men, but it's generally women as well. It goes both ways. 50, There's 50. a princess who saves, Pe- yeah. We lo- we, people love saving someone mm-hmm. and, and feeling like, oh, I can help them. And that's just something that relationships have been started on for hundreds of years even. Well, yeah, because that's a very natural dynamic to have. I don't know. I, I personally don't think it was about saving him. I think that was a lie from the defence to try and make her come right. across as, um, oh, she just thought she was helping him. Mm-hmm. And th- this defence, she thought she was helping him. Just to be clear, the, the lawyers, she thought she was helping him. He has a message. Drink bleach. Hang yourself, jump off a building, stab yourself. I don't know. There's lots of ways to do it. Mm. Helping him. The fact that a lawyer, like, I understand that lawyers have got to do what they have to do, but fuck me. To get up in court and to speak on behalf of that little fucking monster like that. Do you ever wonder if if that's actually a good way of getting, like, should the lawyer actually do that like is that really in the best interest of even her because if you think of it this way i know uh in the court system it's basically we either get you off or you go to prison realistically in the long run what she actually needs is to rehabilitate what she should have done from the get-go is pled guilty yeah so to be told by a lawyer don't worry we'll get you off this because you aren't actually responsible uh, for this this isn't really you blah 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 blah. is that helping her as a human what she should have been told by her lawyers you've done a horrible thing right the the kid had problems clearly Mm -hmm. but you've you've made them 10 times worse and getting to the eventual how he died like Mm -hmm. he she clearly had a massive impact on the final day as well Mm -hmm. She should have been told that, and, and, and lawyers should be more responsible, but it isn't about that. It's about winning cases. It's a, like, Reasonable doubt. This yeah. is the mad thing about being a lawyer, is probably a lot of them get into it to bring justice to the world. But then what are, what are the, the best-known lawyers in the world known for? Getting off the ones who clearly did it. You're talking about fucking uh, O.J. Simpson's lawyer, Michael Jackson's lawyer, the ones who, when it's like, clearly he fucking did it, and you get them off, it's like, what a lawyer. Do you know what I mean? Kardashian and all that shit. So, um, 
some one yeah, one question for you. Mm. Someone suggested in the court, why didn't he block her then? If he, if he was that bad, why didn't he block her? What did you think when they said that? It was an interesting defence. It was. Uh, because love doesn't work that way, because strong emotions don't work that way, because guilt doesn't really work that way, yeah. because maybe he did block her at some point and then unblocked her. Because we don't know... The, mm. the exact thought processes. And I did think one thing that was dangerous about this whole court case was we were almost taking the text messages as if they were the only thing that mattered in this and then inferring feelings from that mm. on both sides. And the adults were very quick to rush to kids nowadays. They live in the digital space. And I was a bit like, yeah. But to me, though, it was deeper on both both sides mm -hmm. I still think she's responsible I still think she was uh, guilty but I also think saying just block someone is such a 40 year old man or woman thing to do and go well why didn't they block them then oh. you're like if maybe well, that, you've that, had to that, go that through that was her defence yeah. yeah he was it, a 40 year old man yeah but you get what I mean it's like if you've had to go through blocking someone or if you've blocked someone for a real reason then you know even how difficult that is or how weird that can feel Especially or how guilty you are. in this day and age, how easy it is to get around that. Yeah. And yeah, and how even if she blocks, you can get around all sorts Email, of blocking. Blah, blah. Email, calls, yeah. you can block your number, all those kind of things. Well, right, okay. So here are some of the messages. Um, he's saying, okay, I'm going to do it today. Do you promise, she says? I promise, babe. I have to. Like right now, question mark? This is about suicide. It was Where do I trivial. go? Question mark. Sad face. So he's looking at her for instructions. Literally, tell me what to do. What do you think of the, the emoji or the sad face thing? Why do you... He's like, where do I go sad face? Like, I don't know what to do. Like, that's the, what, the way I'm reading that from mm -hmm. an emotion. Mm -hmm. From the emoji, right? And you can't break a promise and just go in a quiet parking lot or something. Do it like that. Um... Then he goes, I'm in the worst pain right now. It's unbearable. She says, I think it's time to do it now then. Do you agree? Conrad, answer me. Um, let me... Right, so what else did they say? Can I just ask you, what do you think when he's talking about the pain, what pain do you think he's talking about there? I feel mental pain, it seems. But what kind of... What do you imagine when you hear him say that? Because... Oh, he's obviously not talking about physical pain. He's clearly in... Uh, he's clearly physically... He's mm. fine. Maybe... He's in a very dark, dark depression, depressive state. Yeah, which is, he'd be sleep deprived. He being When you're depressed, you, you, a lot of people go, oh, well, you sleep a lot when you're depressed. Actually, the reason a lot of people try and sleep when they're depressed is because they sleep so badly, they can't get to that level of sleep where their body his, his is actually anxiety, resting. His anxiety, apparently, was really bad as yeah. well. Um, some of the other things. Um, last night was it. You keep pushing it off, and you say you'll do it, but you never do. It's always going to be like that way unless you take action. You're just making it harder on yourself or pushing it off. You have to do it. Do you want to do it now? Mm. Like, I'm reading these things and I'm like, you think she was talking about brushing his teeth? Mm. This is insane. How do, much do you think she didn't know that the phone, if he does die, because very often when you're in the middle of it, you don't think of all the ramifications. You're just thinking of your own benefit. How much do you think she didn't think that those messages would ever be seen? That was interesting. I just thought, how did you... Not think this through, but when when even when the police came to her, she was very relaxed, and she I don't think she was aware that she was in any danger at all. So that I, 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 I thought think that she, interview was really interesting. Her naivety at, at the age she was eighteen or whatever, the fact that um, they were like, "Well, did you speak to him?" and she was like, "Yeah, I mean, I think he mentioned it." Yeah, and it's like. Dude, you, you had a forty-five minute conversation where he stepped out of a car, yeah. which had carbon monoxide okay, going so, into so, it. So to get to that point, so basically, th there's a lot of messages. Um, can I, can I just say this? I, one, of my, one of the first things I did at university was I did a journalism course and we had to go to court for the day. Uh -huh. One thing I worked out from that was how many people don't know how much evidence a mobile phone can give in a court case. Yeah. They basically nailed a guy in this court case because you can triangulate exactly where someone's position is based on yeah. a ping. Uh -huh. This guy who's clearly sitting in the dock had no fucking idea that this information was coming his way. Oh. And I remember sit all of us, none of us had any idea because we were new journalists. And our journalism teacher who covered court cases before was like, wait for it. She knew it was coming. And we and then when they did this, it was basically 
banging him to rights because yeah. it's like well this shows that you took this bus this shows that you did this this shows that you were in this exact location I think the most people think when the person dies it's almost like the phone dies with them yeah. well we're never getting that open he'd left suicide notes with all the uh, you can open all my accounts like this he would clearly left the code for his phone all those kind of things so I think she thought I will never uh, these will never be read. Uh, people don't yeah. know this, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Well, 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 one of the the final messages um, she said is, "You're overturning. They'll see the generator and realize you breathed in CO." He goes, "So should I keep it in the back seat or the front?" She goes, "In the front. You could write it on a piece of paper on tape saying carbon monoxide or something if you're scared." Um, but basically, that's horrible. He's finally in a car park. He's went and got a generator. She's basically directing him on what to do and he starts breathing in um, carbon uh, monoxide and he gets scared he's in pain he's actually physically in pain now mm -hmm. he's actually realizing like this is going to happen he's beginning to lose consciousness those mm, kind of things yeah he gets out the car he then has a phone call with her that's mm -hmm. tracked on record to last 45 minutes I think it's 47 minutes Something overall like mental now we don't know what was said in that, but she confessed at a later date to one of her friends that he got out of the car, he rang me as he was committing suicide, and he said he didn't want to do it, he was getting scared, and I said him, get the fuck back in the car mm -hmm. and get on with it. Now, when you look at all of her previous messages and the way she's desperate for him to do this, the fact that the call log is perfectly in line with everything that she said in that confession, and the fact that he then died, mm -hmm. you, would let, you would believe that this is true. Yeah. Now, we can dissect that, but one of the things the defense said is, well, she also said a lot of things that weren't true. Uh, for example, she had a lesbian relationship that mm -hmm. another person denied. So therefore, what's true and what isn't true? Are you going to believe everything that is in the messages? And I thought to myself, as a defense, that is sloppy. We're talking about a relationship she said she had with a girl, the other girl denies. Yeah. All right, well, that, that's that dead then. Or she lied that one time. Then we're talking about... A, a, a series of events that line up perfectly with a confession where he actually ends up dead and you're comparing those two things I, I just thought the, the defense was so weak it was no wonder that the, the verdict came in guilty uh, but you're partly wondering whether he just did the best with what she was giving him and uh, it was sort of like well the best we can get here is reasonable doubt because there's no way you're fucking exactly, getting off but this the, 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 the one thing that really like to my knowledge anyway the way it came across is that she sat on the phone with him mm -hmm. as he died mm -hmm. She heard his last breath, apparently. Cold bitch. Like, cold. Like, this is... The the reason this we, I wanted to even talk about this is, like, this is the kind of, like, evil, dark, like, manipulative cow that you... You hope, pray you never meet in your life. Especially mm -hmm. because she comes in the form... The, the term wolf in sheep's clothing is thrown around. This is a wolf in sheep's clothing. This girl... Right might look innocent might look pretty but she is the de like you talk about the devil she is the fucking devil how much that is dark there was a point in the documentary where they sort of referenced this because I, I bought into it so quickly uh, you know like this there's a very common image now in America and England and a lot of uh, mm. western civilization a teenage girl can be this evil vindictive nasty person how much do you worry that you're just doing a confirmation bias where it's like yep I thought she was that she's that I'm uh, not at all you don't worry about that no if, if anything I don't I, I don't think that teenage girls are evil vindictive per people at all I think that was a bullshit defense like oh you're just blaming her because she's a young woman it's like what are you talking about like mm. I think there's n the fact that you would even go to there and say oh this is a generalization sorry have you fucking looked at the evidence mate the the the, this is a groundbreaking case because we don't see levels of evil like this in the world. Like, it doesn't happen. This is a, the reason that they had to work out whether or not this was a crime is because people aren't this fucking evil. Like, the way she did it in such a clever way to where that it might not be on her. Because the, the debate they put across is, well, if someone tells you to rob a bank and you rob a you, bank, is it different. their fault? And... and it's like, well, no, but if you instruct someone to go and murder someone and they do that, you are actually partly responsible as well. Well, there's also the, the whole um, drinking the Kool-Aid or those kind of things. But there's, it shows also but how... If you, instruct, if, you, if you 
basically pay someone to go murder someone or whatever and instruct yeah. them, you, you literally will get banged up yeah. for that. Well, and also, if you tell someone to go and rob a bank, you will also go to prison for and, that. And what this was, was almost like that. It was like she, I think, she conned him into thinking she loved him. Yeah. And he was in this sort of Romeo and Juliet shit when she literally was like... I want this guy to die so that people pay attention to me. Because what, what later develops in the story is he's just a very lonely, desperate person. Mm -hmm. And for good reason. Like she, Nobody likes her, but you can tell why when this is, this is who she is. And then there's the point where she, she put on the whole charity thing, but near her own home. So the, the, her, messages, her, her, her messages were weird as well. So mm. the, they didn't come from the same town. So she puts on a charity baseball game because he was a baseball fan and he played for a team. And the, the guy like messages her or rings her up and he's like, uh, he messages her, he's like, why is the baseball game in your hometown? What? She's like, because it was my idea. Mm. It's like, sorry, he died. Yeah. His family, his friends, his baseball team, all in his town. But you, even after death, still want this to be about you. And she was like, don't take credit for my idea. Ha yeah. ha. And it's like, wow. Like, That's even after death, weird. the gravitas of the situation had not sunk in at all. And in that courtroom, what else? Really nailed, nailed how selfish this person was. Mm. And wow, was she selfish was the only time she cried was when they were sentencing her. Yeah. All of the pain, all of the messages, all of the agony that she'd caused in a big way, no flicker of emotion, just deadpan. And the second day sentencing her, the waterworks come on. And I thought, you, unbel like, this is unbelievable. This is why I had to talk about this, because I was like, wow. People like this are really to be avoided. So how much do you think it is about mental health? Where it's like, she is clearly very mentally ill. She's, mm, how, to what point does her mental state explain and possibly take away from what she did and said? I think that a lot in court, they, they claim mental illness because it's an easy off. And it? it's like, when you don't, when there isn't an explanation for why someone could do something so wicked and evil, it's easy to go, oh, I was insane. Mm. And it's like, were you though? Like, did you think you were the second coming of Jesus? Were you that insane? Don't put David Icke down. No, <laughs> but unless you literally think aliens are coming to take you away and all of that, but like, if your whole behavioral pattern suggests that you've completely lost your mind, fair enough. That's a defense. But when when everything else that you're doing in your life, you're getting good grades, you're graduating, you're, you're like everything she's doing, she's able, she's fully functioning. She was also psychologically analyzed by a professional a lot, not long after and was shown to be more or less completely fine. She's immaculate. Mm. She is like, she is not something who's losing her shit here. She's dressed very well for court as no, well. That's what I found she, She's weird. immaculate. She's very well spoken. We're not dealing with a nutter here. Mm -hmm. A nutter and a sick, evil cunt are not the same thing. Yeah. So Ted Bundy was not mentally ill. Ted no, Bundy he was gorgeous. Ted Bundy was an evil, clever man. And this is what we're dealing with here. Someone who can use love and control and influence to manipulate someone. But she was almost to a degree, even slicker than a, than a Ted Bundy. The, mm. the level of evil we're dealing, and especially from such a young age, like she's even almost more dangerous because she was able, she didn't even have to get her hands dirty. She was able to get the, the victim to kill themselves. So with everything wider than the court case, right? And not specifically involved with this situation, how does it reflect on society now that this person was constructed and came together in this age that we think we know we can we're so uh, technologically advanced you know i bet this isn't the first time though this is the thing i think this is the first time we've really 
took someone to the fucking cleaners. Well, we've had a transcript of everything exactly. basically he said. How many abusive relationships around the world mm -hmm. where it's the shoe on the other foot and the man, for example, is just telling the woman what a piece of shit she Kill is. Yourself, yeah. Every day, he treats her like shit, he's beating her up, he's spat on her, he's done all the horrible things he can, and one day he comes home and she's dead. Mm. But there's no record of it, and yeah. there's no proof of it. This has probably been going on in many different ways, in many different forms, for a long, long, long time. It's just now because of the phone, we've got actual proof of it. But what I mean is, um, how badly does it reflect on society that we've constructed someone like this and that this person even existed at this point? Yeah. Because we know the outside psychological influences, that pop culture, that TV, that, uh, you know, she was on medication, mm. that all these things, this cocktail of all this stuff. She wanted to came, be popular. Yeah. I think that's the cause of it. That as well. For her. Yeah. That's where, the, the, that's where it begins. So that, how that responsible, first, how responsible though is she for that side of it? Does that make her evil that she was this, um, th th all these circumstances came together to make her this person? Is she then responsible for that at such a young age for being a young woman who's clearly going through difficult things herself? How responsible is she for that? Because there are other people out there who would claim the other way where it's almost like, um, well, this was, she, was, she was manipulated in her own way. You know, she wasn't loved by her parents. She had this, she had that. All these different things made I mean, her desperate. Everyone has outside factors. The fact that she's watching Glee and seeing Leah Michelle become a martyr because she survived her boyfriend's death doesn't mean she should then want her boyfriend to die so that mm -hmm. she has the same glow from it. Yeah. Um, but it is interesting what you're saying. I, I think the fact is, though, because this is a one-off or it's a very rare thing that happens proves that it isn't something where we can go oh well it's not her fault because there was outside factors we're all dealing with outside factors every how, single day of the how many times do you think it possibly happens where because suicide isn't the only bad thing that can come from this there are probably some relationships out there where people are self-harmers there are probably eating disorders eating disorders yeah. there are so many things that we could list I'm, here th i guarantee you there's there's men out there calling their girlfriends fat and, and the yeah. girlfriends having issues because of it. And that, there's sexual abuse, there's yeah, body abuse, there's physical, it. there's there's you know mental, there's all these different things. There's mm. probably loads of relationships. Even where even when you know even when you've been in relationships, uh, speaking from personal experience, where you get questioned every fucking right. What are, you, what are you doing? What are you doing? Why are you what? doing this? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, control. That, that, the control. That in, in itself is a, is the beginnings of something. Do you it's, know what I mean? It's a level of abuse, yeah. and that's partly. It's also very difficult to call out because it's um. It's, the, it's deniable. There's plausible well, yeah. deniability because there. Because there's the like, explanation of, oh, I'm just wondering. Oh, well, I was yeah. just wondering where you are. Yeah, I didn't mean it like, like that. Oh, it doesn't feel that way. It, it's not only it doesn't feel like the way. It's also <laughs> that I've seen people like that where I, I've known people who have been controlled in a relationship and they've uh, had it where someone has messaged them, where are you? Mm. And then that person, and they've gone, oh, I'm just blah, 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 doing this. And then you, I've turned to them and gone, man, that's fucking weird that mm. they text you every 10 minutes. You okay now? You coming home? You doing this? You doing that? That, that, is, that is the beginnings of stuff. Where it could, For me, that, that's already If you're not you're strong there. enough, if you're not a strong human being, male or female, because it happens on both sides, that shit can get worse. And, and if you don't stand up to those people, it can bring you further and further down and the level of control that they have just grows and grows and grows and grows until people become a shell of themselves. And they begin to control what, everything you Absolutely. see, everything you do, the people you see, and, and, the and people that's you do stuff with. You know, I've spoken to girls who before have had very controlling boyfriends who mm -hmm. they're like, yeah, I forgot who I was. Yeah. And then you're like, really? Like this guy used to be like that? Like... I, I mean, I don't know what people would think about me as what I would be like, but I, I think you should let someone just be themselves. Like, don't be like, where are you? What are you doing? You can't do this. You've got to dress like that. You've got to eat this. you got to, like, but, who has time to worry about? And, and what it, the weird thing is, the weird thing is where it all stems from, that control and that power that they are using to squeeze that other person down and make them feel so small, is because it all comes from the lack of self-worth inside the person doing it, the person who feels um, insecure about who they are. So, And that's where this girl destroyed that boy, is because she was insecure herself. Can we explore that for a second? Go ahead. So, uh, 
I know there's a lot of people out there who don't like Jordan Peterson anymore because some people think he disappeared down a right wing wormhole or whatever. I happen to disagree. I don't really care what people think. Yeah, I think his literature is actually quite good. I think on a micro level, he's better than his macro. But he does some really good talks on breaking down uh, Disney films. And I recently watched one. Do you know what's so funny? Go on. When I watched this shit, yeah. I thought, fuck me, Disney have got a lot to answer. Yeah. It was yeah. one of the first things that came to my head because it's like this fairy tale that people are born indoctrinated Destined, in from yeah. day one. It's like Aladdin meets the fucking princess and it exactly. all happily ever. And it's like, this is bullshit. Like what we need is a Disney movie where the, the guy meets the girl, the girl falls in love, he's perfect, she's perfect. And then he gets hit by a bus. And then she's got to go and find another guy wow. and she ends up with a dickhead and she's pretty miserable, but she always misses the original guy. Because that's a lot more like real life. So that's Meet Joe Black. <laughs> that's Meet Joe Black where uh, they meet in the uh, coffee shop yeah. and then the guy gets hit by a bus, but death just I've takes never his seen body. It. It's a really good, it's a great I mean, movie. I've literally, Rapid's gorgeous uh, in it. Apparently I've just thought of it, but You've yeah. just thought, yeah. I mean, you think you have. Um, Scripted by True so, Geordie. So Jordan Peterson lays out why Lion King is so important for the path of young men and why it's about the path that most young so men weird, go on. so weird, because I love the Lion King. Right. Well, then you'll love this. So, uh, obviously, he loses his father. Mm -hmm. Big moment for any young man losing a parent, but especially losing their dad um, and realising that, that uh, the fallibility of that person, that that person was tricked, all those kind of things. And then also realising that evil exists. He runs away from it, and he goes away to paradise with Timon and Pumbaa, who are a bit like those teenage friends that maybe lead you away from having responsibility and all those kind of things. And then the crux of this talk is about how very often a woman can, in a, in a good way for some people, but not for everyone, bring responsibility and uh, a constructive um, structure to a man's life. They make life you grow up. By cha yeah, by yeah. challenging you, yeah. taking you away from those friends that make you irresponsible or being like, God, you know, those friends needs to grow up as well and challenging you and making you into the man and reminding you of responsibility. It's which so is, fucking true though. Yeah. Now in that, there's something really healthy there and maybe that's only really the role that someone that you love can play or someone that you feel you're in an intimate relationship with can play. Mm -hmm. But it's also how it often... It also doesn't explain the why they blatantly shag when they go off into the... Yeah, although <laughs> although sex is obviously... The, her face in that, where she, where they're having sex, uh, uh, Jordan Peterson does pause it there and laugh, and he's like, he's like, it's a lion, but even I find it sexy. <laughs> because her eyes are so international sign for let's have oh, yeah, sex. Yeah, yeah, she's like, let's get it on. Yeah, but at the same time, what I found really funny about that was how can everyone in that room look at that and go, they're having sex? That's so hilarious that and, Disney and can do that. Yeah, that was, Disney smashed it with that for that reason. Well, he didn't smash it. That was a very, lo it was lovely, lovemaking. Um, but the point is that it is very often that the responsibility in a relationship on a woman or on a man to help that other person mature is really important. But there are so many people out there who haven't matured themselves or are ready for a relationship who won't help you mature. They will help you uh, change to be the person that they want you to be. Oh, they will be that manipulative person. And the amount so of true. people who have been through that, mm. but the, the, the controller has made out as if they are the person who's trying to help that's such a massive red flag that most people can't identify. And unfortunately, too many people don't see it coming and by the time they realise it, it's too late. They're yeah. already a year into the relationship yeah. and their friends, one of their friends checks them and goes, who the fuck are you? Mm -hmm. Like, what happened? You know what I mean? And some people, because of the fear of being lonely, don't have the strength to get off their fucking arse and go, I'm not going to put up with this anymore and I'm going. Absolutely. And it, that requires a lot of strength because being loving someone and being in that relationship and the security and the you know and the idea of being alone again there's so many factors that keep people in that box and like fuck that box don't ever allow yourself to be in that That's but then thought. let's talk the other way where there are many desperate teenage girls out there and many desperate teenage boys who want to have a loving relationship who do feel lonely who maybe sometimes will be so desperate that they don't realize what they're doing and then afterwards they realize wow i've actually become a nasty person i'm trying to manipulate someone else mm. a lot of that's down to upbringing though and i think yeah. a lot of that is down to this this insecurity it's down to people 
not being a whole person mm. and this is a term that gets thrown around that a lot of people don't understand but when you have the love of a parent or parents and they make you they build you up because that's what you're doing when you're parenting the child they and they let you feel like you are good enough mm -hmm. you are enough you are anything you want to be you can do it Th these things that parents can make you feel that when you do meet the right person you're not searching for love or things that, you in, that you've never had before. You're searching for someone who loves themselves, like you love yourself because of the great upbringing you've had, who can then bring that love together. Yeah. And that doesn't happen a lot. And when you're a teenager, let's be honest, you, in my opinion, you shouldn't be looking for a fucking relationship when you're a teenager because mentally you're not ready for it. Yeah, and, and that's not patronising. No. That's not... It's that's, really that you are in the process. There's a, real, there's a good reason why teenage relationships don't last. There's also a good reason why you don't take a cake out halfway through baking. Yeah. It doesn't taste good yet. I mean, it's not get, baked. Don't get me wrong. Like, I understand... We, you need those first loves as well to actually get into a position to be mentally ready for the right person. So that there is there is a reason to have it, but they never work, let's be honest. Yeah, so I guess that, that's the difficult side of it is you don't want to pick someone out to be your first love and sort of be in the relationship like, listen, this isn't going to work because you're my first love. Uh, it, but it, at the not, same time, it's important that you go through that. It is, like, like, I know I've probably fucked up a little bit. It is possible that you can pick the first love and it can last. It's just fucking unlikely. But what, I, what yeah, I agree. Yeah. Apparently it takes- It's like getting a hole in one on your first golf swing. Like it's right. unlikely. So apparently, although I am good at, apparently it takes three relationships really. And there are three sort of formative relationships in your life. The first will be a very naive one. The second one will most possibly be a very painful one. And the third one will most likely be something where you've learned from the first two, right? And I'm, I'm saying this is a very common narrative. In theory. Lives. In theory, yeah. right? Mm. Can we flag that if you have been a nasty, abusive person in a relationship and everyone at some point has done something nasty in a relationship, when you break up, people say nasty things. They'll say that you were the nasty person in a relationship. Don't make your identity out of being that person. Look at what you've done there. And in the same way as if you've been hurt, work out that you're also hurting yourself when you're an abusive person in a relationship. Because I know there will be a lot of people who will have watched that documentary and not related to the guy, but actually be a teenage girl and relating to that girl. Or a boy. And, right. Yeah, and relating to that intensity. Don't make your identity out of being the bad guy. You can change. You Absolutely. can still be a better person. And, and the that. person I was when I had my first relationship is unrecognizable to who I am. Exactly, now. yeah. That's because... And, and many relationships after that, I was like, oh shit, I need yeah. to not do. So like, for example, there was things like if a girl had been with, uh, I, the girl I was seeing had been with a boy who was better than me in any way. If I thought he was better, I would have a problem right. with that. I'd be like, don't fucking mention him to me ever again. You know what I mean? Like, I'd be really controlling. Brian that. often says that about Adam Boltwood and I. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Um, but you know what I mean? Like, there was a, I was threatened. It's jealousy, I was, yeah. I was insecure, once again. The insecure, insecurity is like the root of so many problems in relationships. And that was, and I remember. How did it feel when you worked that out? I don't know. I became extremely self-confident and, self, and my self-worth was there. But not in an arrogant way, as much as people might think I'm arrogant. Um, yeah. it, it was like a, from a, if, I think even sexually I was talking to a girl about sexual experiences she'd had with a guy she'd fucked a guy who had a bigger dick than me and there was a, there was a moment where I was like fucking 12 in, like whatever it was right? wow. I was like like Jesus yeah. but in my head I was like ah oh, good for you like it was right. it, there was a there was a thing where it was just all like I don't I don't actually care anymore right. about any of that and I was like because I'm a man now. I'm actually okay. a man who's actually aware that every girl that you meet, the likelihood is, well, the reality is, she will have been with a guy who either makes more money than you, makes a laugh better than you, makes a come better than you, does something better than you do. The point is... I'm just trying to think of what he'd do better than me. <laughs> the package that I bring to the table, not literally, <laughs> yeah. is, is huge, is unique. Is 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 Very. something is something where whether they do one thing better than me, the bottom line is is I know that in everything I bring, this makes this person happy and they make me happy and and that's that's all that matters. And, and, we're here now. and actually I'm interested in knowing 
her life and her experiences and I don't want her to feel like she can't fucking tell me about oh I had this it's kinky time, sex yeah. before or we went on a great trip or we, I had memories with this but I don't want her to feel like they can't confide in me but you know I always find weird about that you love that person now so the people who have been before you have helped to make that person the person they are now. Uh, but, so why would you not want to hear about yeah, that? Yeah, but, but this is the thing is, though, is I was an immature, right. and testosterone-fueled, insecure young man. Right. Who, I'm not blaming you for but that. I, yeah. and, and, and there was a pride that was hurt whenever any woman said anything was better about, about anything. I'm talking the car they drove, the dress set, anything. It used to set me off. Like, I would be in a mood <clears throat> for the rest of that day. Like, don't fucking talk to me. Wow. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <clears throat> and, and letting that go and just being, like, really comfortable with who I am. It's amazing. Made me a better person. It also makes you 10 times more attractive to me. I don't mean to me. You're I mean, welcome. like, yeah. I'm glad to know that. Yeah, let's have a little kiss and Got cuddle. a bit of a skip in my step. But the point is, it, it does make you 10 <laughs> times more attractive to a person when you can just be like... Cause you know what? Fuck it. Like, because that's true self confidence. Exactly. That's not. I'm not talking about fake cockiness that all men have when they swagger into a bar and they're looking for a woman to fucking pull. Some men have. I'm, that. I'm no. I had it, but I'm just saying, like, real self confidence is, and that is that is part of why when everyone was laughing at my DMs and all of that stuff, I actually could handle that because yeah. it's like, yeah, fuck it. Like, that's just sex. Like, it's not a big deal. And and. I'm actually happy with who I am as a person. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's things I'd like to work on, but I know I'm not. Oh, I'm Everyone's not. A, got that, yeah. I'm not a bad person, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. And that is about growing up, and it's taken me fucking thirty years to do that. You know what I mean? That's and a I, long time. And I know some people who are fucking fifty and sixty who never do that. But it's about like owning your shortcomings and actually going. Yeah, I'll work on that I'll, and accepting what you really are. The, and you, when you're a teenager, you're miles off that because you don't even know who you are yet. Mm -hmm. You've got to get through knowing, finding out who you are, dealing with the fact that you're not going to like some of what that is. Exactly. And then accepting that. And usually from 20 to 30, I feel like that's what that period is. Mm -hmm. 20 to 25 is sort of finding out what it is. And 25 to 30 is accepting that. And, and if you're particularly smart, you can make it 30 to 50, 50 uh, to, and you'll go further. Yeah. But a lot of it, I guess what I dislike is, um, well, not dislike, but maybe find troubling is when people go, well, I'm a man now. I've done the growing. And very often they regress. Do you know what I mean? Jen, I was, um, the other day I was thinking about this and I was like, the people who are the, the the dumbest or the ones when the minute you think you know everything there is to know or life is about to kick you in the balls that is an actual psychological i can't remember what the uh, term is called but it's an actual psychological uh, issue right mm. because it's basically that if you are dumb you will overestimate how good you are because yeah. you're not smart enough to work out how dumb you are absolutely and so it, the the best analogy for that is when uh, a lot of new editors or cameramen come in and work with us a lot of them think they've got it nailed and they've worked it out because mm. they're still at the beginning of their journey yeah but the more you know the more likely you are to think that you know very little about yeah. a situation so that's why when someone comes in they're like yeah i pretty much know it doubt that person more than you've ever doubted anyone <laughs> because there's no way that no, they no. know for real when no, you okay. are in uh, when you're messaging someone mm -hmm. sometimes things can go a little bit intense and in that moment you get caught up you create this fantasy in your mind no you create, shit. yeah you create all these um little things which can either turn you on or you'll be lustful towards mm -hmm. part part of me wondered how much of this relationship was that uh not our relationship but the relationship on the this i i felt that this is what i was trying to say about fantasy they cook it it, it was I don't know how to describe it. Almost like suicide porn. It, yeah. was, it was almost Lustful. like, let's create this into this whole thing mm -hmm. that it isn't really that. Exactly. There is no romanticism in suicide. There is no glory. There is no everlasting eternal legacy. There is just sadness. And she didn't understand what the fuck she was getting into at all. And neither did he, I bet. And how much of that? And only the people who truly know are the parents. And it's when he killed himself that I wonder whether that bubble burst and she was like, shit, there's actually like real consequences here. Oh, yeah. 
because oh yeah and that's where the tears came in because she was a child crying for her freedom and the fun the funny thing that they did they pled not guilty mm-hmm. they dragged it out as long as they could they did everything they could to make sure she did no prison time and the irony of it is if they pled guilty at the start they probably would have gotten a, pe- a slap less, on the wrist yeah. If they'd accepted jail time at the start, she would have went in a juvenile prison. But because they drug it out as so long as they did and showed no class in the disgraceful behaviour that she uh, showed, she ended up in an adult prison for 15 months. Well, then part of that... So, I, no, yeah. the, the lesson there is, if she just held her hands up, she would have gotten less, much less, than the way she drug it out the way she did. Well, then part of that then is also that she was advised badly because... it Because the lawyer was def- a fucking prick. Yeah, I mean, he tried his best, mate. He was he working was a with... Yeah, yeah, he was working with uh, poor tools, I guess. But yeah, yeah. Uh, the part of that is the, is the advice. But uh, I, and, and, and one thing that annoyed me is how good she looked on the final day. She got... To, I was like... She looked like Cara Delevingne. No, but she had like short hair. She like... I'm like... You're right. You've got your life together. <laughs> she looks like she's about to go and like model or yeah. something. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, or uh, close as she can get. Yeah, yeah, she didn't look like she was devastated. And uh, I don't know. For me, you often see people who do really shitty things look terrible. Tony Blair, for example, he looks awful. He looks evil now. He yeah, looks like the Green Goblin. Because. I mean, in theory, eventually your conscience has to take a, a impact, and, and your your face, your body, it shows on the other. You, you can say what you want. Tony Blake can say what you. Want. It shows how racked with guilt of the oh, God knows how many people he's been yeah. responsible for deaths. With her, it doesn't show. She looks beautiful do you know what i mean she looks like there's nothing wrong with her yeah and i'm like that's the level of guilt that she has none whatsoever maybe that because she it. never loved him yeah in my opinion she never cared about him this is her movie that she's living out that and is- i just wonder if she's realizing that in the movie she's actually the bad guy yeah i don't think she's worked that out yet yeah it depends where you put the act that's that is sad isn't it i think we're done I'd say so as well. Yeah. I'd be interested to know what other people think, and especially teenage girls who. Careful where you're going with this. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, I'd spe- in I'm the comments, uh, yeah, don't DM me. Uh, uh, in the comments, I'd be especially interested to know what a teenage girl thought of this, because maybe from a teenage girl's perspective, they've just got another view on it, and I'm, I don't mean that in a in a. I think w- w- women uh, of all ages, because they've all been teenagers at one point, but um, them, even the five year olds, personally. I, I read the comments every now and then and I think everyone's just going to be fucking disgusted in that to be honest with you mm. so we'll see I think it's really sad it's, it, it, both of those people came to a sad end yeah don't forget to hit that like button subscribe thanks for watching and we'll see you later I just looked at my editor <laughs>